Okay, so as promised, here's my follow-up video on the previous pinhole video. I got all the film developed yesterday and scanned today. And now we're going to look at what the pinhole, the zone plate, and the zone sieve look like compared to each other. First, let's start out with this photo I took on top of one of the craters of the San Francisco Peaks. Now, as you can see, this is the pinhole image, and it looks very, very good. It, unless you zoom in a little bit and see some of the softer edges, it's kind of hard to tell this apart from uh, an actual camera lens. I'm actually very impressed by this. Now let's look at the zone plate. And if you want to know what a zone plate looks like, it's like this. Unlike a standard pinhole, a zone plate uses diffraction in order to essentially focus the light. The upside to this is that you get a lot more light than a pinhole. I could have almost taken these shots handheld. The downside to this is that the images look like this. So as you can see, it basically looks like I'm taking the photo in a fog. There's barely any contrast and there's barely any focus either. In fact, it's almost like the image is out of focus though I'm quite sure I did shoot this at the correct focal length. As a side note, what I mean by that is that a zone plate actually requires a specific focal length. You have to focus it like a lens. The elements in that pattern of the zone plate are actually designed to only work at a specific distance from your film. Anyways, what is interesting about this is even though I just claimed it was very out of focus in low contrast, at the same time it doesn't really look like an out of focus image. Usually even in an out of focus image from a normal lens there's some weird crispness. This is just like soft all over. This is almost like um, smearing Vaseline or something on the front of your lens to get a soft focus effect. So while interesting, I don't think this is very useful for landscape photos maybe for uh, some other shots that are higher contrast like interiors maybe something with color it might be interesting but here I personally don't like it and uh, finally for this scene we're gonna go on to the zone sieve if you're curious what a zone sieve looks like here's a photo of one essentially a zone sieve combines elements of the zone plate in a pinhole it has multiple pinholes as you can see up to several hundred of them and by arranging them in an interesting pattern similar to that of the zone plate this zone sieve is able to achieve uh, you know the larger aperture of the zone plate with uh, purportedly a little more sharpness uh, this special shape and pattern of pinholes is important because without it, having multiple pinholes will just give you multiple overlays of the same image, kind of ha like having multiple lenses expose the same piece of film. But the special pattern is supposed to cause some diffraction, which eliminates that multiple pattern effect. But anyways, enough with the technical details, let's look at the photo. Initially, it doesn't seem like this is much different than what we got from the zone plate, but actually, if you look back and forth at the two, this one's actually a bit sharper and a bit more contrasty. Though in this scene, it's kind of hard to tell, but if you uh, zoom in, you can definitely tell on my end that there's a, definitely, there's a little more sharpness here. Okay, now for the second set of images we're going to look at here. This was the photo of the field with Sunset Crater in the background. Now, it turns out I didn't do the exposure properly on all three of these images, so please ignore the differences in the exposure on the next three, but instead look at the sharpness. Alright, here's the pinhole image. Again, the pinhole works quite well. I'm surprised at how sharp it is, especially since uh, I can achieve an extremely wide angle. These shots were shot at a 45 millimeter, 47 millimeter ish focal length. And getting a 47 millimeter lens for medium format is quite expensive, several hundred dollars at least. 
So for a 20 to $30 pinhole investment, I'm actually quite pleased with this image. Next, again, let's look at the results from the zone plate. Now this is more interesting because here we actually have some detail up close to the camera in the grass. And, well, it looks a little bit interesting. I think if this was in color, it would almost be a little bizarre looking and maybe a little bit interesting. But again, it just looks kind of like you smeared Vaseline on the lens. I'm not sure I like it. And finally, with the same image again, but with the zone sieve. And I don't know what that light leak is in the upper left corner. I haven't figured that out yet. But in the image itself, as before, it is a bit sharper. And you know what? I, I kind of like it. It's sharp, but smooth. Kind of like it is taken through multiple pinholes in the image is overlaid on itself. But each of those images are actually a bit sharp. I'm, again, I'm a bit more intrigued with this result than with the zone plate. So, if anything, I'm going to keep the zone sieve in my camera bag and probably not even bother with that zone plate from now on. Oh, and just to compare the zone sieve and the zone plate, here's a 100% crop of one of the blades of grass in the image that I just showed. On the left, you can see the zone plate, where it's very out of focus and quite blurred. Whereas on the right with the zone sieve, you get this interesting effect where you do kind of see a sharp image of the blade of grass or the stick or whatever in the middle, but then the softness kind of falls off more sharply than with the zone plate. The zone sieve actually I quite like. I think in color, it looked like an interesting aura I would like to take a portrait or something with the zone sieve. I think that would be quite interesting. So again, in conclusion, I was able to overcome my fear of pinhole photography in yesterday's photo expedition. And from the resulting images, uh, you can see that I'm fairly satisfied with most of them. Again, I'm not actually that impressed by the zone plate. It's just too soft to be worth bringing. I might as well just defocus my lens, or as I said before, just put some oil or Vaseline on the front to give that soft focus effect. But the Photon sieve, and especially the pinhole, actually produced quite impressive images, and it's at a focal length that's hard to achieve with medium format and large format. So I think the conclusion here is those are quite impressive and certainly fun to play around with. At some point, I'll definitely want to try all of them in color just to see what happens, especially on a, a high contrast scene, like maybe red rocks or uh, springtime flowers or things. That might be quite interesting. Anyways, here at the end, here's a bonus image. If you recall in the video yesterday, I talked about shooting a photo with the pinhole completely retracted into my camera. And just as I predicted in the video, a bit of my uh, rails on the Horseman camera did show up at the bottom. And the pinhole is so close to the film that the cone of the lens holder actually prevents me from exposing the entire piece of film, as you can see by the rounded corners. But again, I quite like it. That's really cool. I wouldn't mind taking a photo like that every now and then. With the rails in the shot, it's kind of like a first person view of being the camera. So again, quite interesting, definitely worth a play around. And the pinhole optic is so thin and small that I might as well keep it in my bag all the time because sometimes it can be a bit of fun to play with. All right, that's it for this two-part series on my first experimentations with pinhole. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments. And thank you for watching.